Hello everyone and welcome back. I am Ilya Laparev, principal cellist of the Netherlands Philharmonic Orchestra in Amsterdam. I thought today we're gonna talk about a very nice concerto, which is the cello concerto number two in D major by Josef Haydn. Since this is a concerto that I work probably two, three times per week with my students and also by myself, I thought it would be interesting to share some ideas with you and what my take is inside this piece. Also, I got a question from someone on Instagram that uh, can you help us to provide some information about, you know, difficult stuff and so on. So I thought, yeah, of course, with pleasure. So I thought, you know, why not with the opening of the concerto? The opening of the concerto is already a very hard moment because on the moment we start the opening it's either you know it's all in or we fail so that's why today i wanted to focus in this opening section when the cello comes in after the beautiful orchestra introduction before we dive into this lesson subscribe if you are not subscribed yet and otherwise well let's enjoy so first of all I would like to approach this concerto in a different way, not as, you know, people talk or, you know, people are, you know, stressing us out like, ah, this is a very difficult concerto or no, this is a concerto that we all feel. No, I like to approach this, you know, as an opera piece, you know, it could be like an opera of Mozart, you know, you have the overture, then you have the, you know, the the main character coming on the stage, singing it part, then you have the recitativa, the aria, and so on. So I like to approach it this way, you know, the opera way, since I'm also playing a lot of opera lately. So this is an interesting fact to keep in mind, and I really highly recommend you listen to operas like Mozart, or even the more romantic ones, you know, Puccini and so on, just so that you have an idea, you know, how this whole thing works. But Mozart, it's fine. It's quite close to Haydn, you know, classical period. Now, the other thing I like to keep in mind is that uh, the tonality of the concerto. So we have two cello concertos by Haydn. We have the C major concerto, which is the number one, and now the D major. I like to play around with these tonalities. So for instance, each tonality has its own character. For me, C major, like from the concerto... <laughs> which is very royal, it's very fresh, it's very young, you know. But then we have the D major, you know. I think this is more like a victory, you know, or could be triumph. But here in this case, in Haydn's cello concerto, you know, I see it more as sweetness. This concerto is extremely sweet and also calm. You know, we get nervous when we play, but let's not forget that Haydn, he was a little bit older, you know, when he wrote this concerto, so he was already a little bit more mature. So we also have to be mature when we play this concerto compared to his uh, C major concerto. So those are the first two things that I keep in mind, you know, just before even I start to study, to practice this piece, I put this click in my mind that, okay, this is like an opera, so I am the main character, the main, you know, singer, whatever. So I have to sing on the cello and not only just, you know, focusing on the notes like, ah, I cannot miss the shift. Of course, intonation here is crucial because it's so transparent. This concerto is so transparent that, of course, if you miss one note, you can clearly hear. It's not like just a coach concerto. If you play a dirty note, it's, you know, we can forgive it. But in Haydn, it's a little bit tricky. So the opening of the concerto. So what is a common mistake that I often see? Not often, but probably I see this every time, you know, during lessons or during auditions when I participate as a jury member in orchestras, is that, you know, people, they tend to play like on each beat. So they play But instead, you know, you should think bigger, you know, you should st think more instead of eight, you know, pa, 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 and so on. I would think rather in four because, okay, this concerto also, it's written in four, four, right? But even better, I would think, you know, throughout the whole measure because the first phrase, here we are. So we had the first phrase, the first note. Um, so that's the first beat. Um, And 
there it's finished. Because if we play every me um, everything, uh, it gets stuck and then we are not flowing. And this, you know, is really important when you perform. In Haydn's concerto, when you have the opening, puff, straight to the point, you know, very flowing in the right mood, then you're good to go for the whole concerto. So the opening is very important. So I need you to breathe in and to breathe out. So we feel free on that first note. This is very important. And movements, movements. So think per measure. So one more time. So that's the first beat. Now we go to the A. Disappear and now we have something new. Right here we have. So it's different now. So this is something very important to keep in mind. Also in further passages when you play these ones. Uh, this is so typical. Yep, pop, 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 as it would be a popper etude, but it's not. Instead, you know, you need to hug it. So think more in longer lines. Mm. And so on. But okay, going back to the beginning, because at the end, um, I wanted to talk today about this opening over here. So I hope that this was clear for you, that you need to create, you know, longer lines, longer phrases. So a good exercise would be sing this melody, take this score, and how would you sing this? Would you sing it like this? Or would you rather sing it like this? It's a huge difference, right? So whatever you sing, try. Try to capture that in your ears and try to find this on the instrument. Of course, it's always easier to sing than to play, but we need to find it. Especially your right hand here is crucial. So don't think that vibrato here, you know, will help a lot. And this is a topic that also we're going to talk about this, about the use of vibrato. Um, but very important is that you breathe with your, with your right hand. Um, so this is very important. Do this on open strings, you know, just before, you know, you, you get into the concerto itself. So, all right, we got these first measures. So... Now we come on this B. Uh. So that's a spot that everyone, you know, uh, gets afraid and it doesn't sound as it should sound. What might be a common problem is that you use a lot of bow on the beam. And then, well, there you go. And then it's difficult. What I suggest is, you know, to either use not so much bow on the B, save it, but penetrate it more through the string until here and then from there because the less bow you're gonna use the more controlled and the more crisp that's gonna be because if you use a lot of motion it's gonna be very messy but let's say if you're using a lot of bow on the B if you really want to give everything on that B which is you know could be gorgeous uh, to show this chord uh, fine what now? Maybe then you can give more um, space on the D until there and then you go shorter. So then we're gonna have this. Uh... So it's okay if you take a little bit more of time on that D because actually this is like, you know, in the Mozart operas like ha 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 ha. Uh, that's why I like to uh, listen to these operas, you know, to have this in mind. And when I try to play this, it's like, oh, okay, you know, it comes from the opera. And so you can play, or this is like a laughing, you know. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. Or if you use lots of bow, that's fine, but then make sure the D. You fly back, flying back, so very light. And then you do the rest staccato. Okay, now the next phrase. This is for me probably the most beautiful moment. 
in this whole opening because we're gonna have you know this a and this is what happens you know in the in the accompaniment and so on so you need to play this you know extra sweet you know hugging so there really I would be generous and then in the second time maybe you can go less so then we have the first time and I'll for a second time less so can you build up your way through to that A sharp understand so one more time I'm gonna repeat this so you have this long note So then really you are playing with movements. It's moving here, it's moving there. You're moving with the wind. And that's a thing I wanted to mention in the beginning, but I forgot, I remembered now, is that, you know, the cello is such a rich instrument. We can imitate so many instruments. And maybe perhaps here in this concerto, in many parts, we can imagine the hoboe. Oboe? Oh I don't know how it's called to, like uh, in English. Oboe. Oh anyway, you understand what I mean. So it's like a woodwind. When you listen to orchestral pieces or if you're playing um, inside the orchestra, always pay attention to the hobo, how lyrical this sounds. So this is very important also that you try to imagine that you're playing that instrument so that it doesn't become... So it doesn't become too chalistically. Think about other instruments. Don't be limited. Open your mind. So a hobo here. Now, fingerings in the next passage. This is something that uh, most of the people, they tend to stay on the same string, which I I actually envy because I would love to play uh, like this. Uh, but I get so scared, you know, at auditions or whenever I have to play it. I don't know, it doesn't work out with me. Maybe some of you are dealing with the same problem. So I have a different fingering uh, for this passage. Uh, so, so, okay, I go from here. So thump on the A and then I go to the D string. And here I stretch. And I add some vibrato over there to make it really like an angel. To make it extremely special. So one more time I'll show you the fingering. And so on. Of course, there are pros and cons. The con of this uh, fingering that I'm giving to you, the thing is, is that it's not so lyrical when you come to the A. It sounds a little bit empty, but okay. You know, if you have a really well um, trained right hand and you can create colors with that, then it's okay because anyway, it, it goes in tempo. Anyway. No one is gonna really hear it. But like if you're playing it slowly, like I just did, then you're gonna hear it and you're gonna be like, Ugh, it doesn't sound really nice. Of course it sounds nicer like this. Because you're pressing it and then, you know, you can add a little bit of vibrato if you wish, you know, which adds this extra life. But okay, anyway, that's the con. The con could be also that for those that have difficulties with stretching, you're gonna need to shift, so then I would not recommend uh, the fingering that I'm giving to you. The pro about is that it's much more lyrical, I think. Maybe it's not so resonating, maybe it wouldn't project, you know, that sharp into the hole, but it's gonna be more mellow, it's gonna be more warmer. Anyway, it depends on what you want. If you want stability and a more mellow sound, 
and a more warming character, then I would go for my fingering. If you really, you know, want poof, penetrates through the hole, then I would, you know, stay on the A string. But then you will have lots of shifts to go. But okay, again, once you practice this, there should be no problem. Now, another fingering that I wanted to mention before, it's at the first note ever. So most of my students and most of the people that come to me to play, uh, they already have the problem in the first note going to the second note. So, uh, which is the same note, but different fingering. So many times I hear, you know, the same note, but out of tune. I don't know, sometimes it's just, you know, a lack of practice or just a lack of this, you know, uh, technique, a lack of practice of this technique of substituting, you know, uh, the finger on the same note. So I have another possibility. And in fact, I am using that possibility. I don't start with the third finger. For my hand, for my finger, I feel more comfortable to start with the second finger. So number two. Uh... <laughs> because I feel there is more weight going into my finger, you know, to create a more open vibrato. But again, that's up to you, because with the third finger, you also have this uh, ability, you know, to create this open vibrato. Anyway, it's just a suggestion, because when you're gonna have to change, uh, with the second finger going to the first finger, it's a really small distance. Meanwhile, with the third going with the first, yeah, it's a bigger distance and okay, you risk, you know, to play that note out of tune. But again, if you're a professional and if you practice it, everything's sh supposed to be fine. Now about vibrato. So there are different ways, of course, to approach this and every cellist, every musician has its own idea about vibrato. Here in this concerto, and in general, in classical music and uh, Baroque music, I prefer, you know, to create my colors, my tones, everything with my right hand and not with my left hand. Because sometimes, you know, the left hand can disturb a little bit besides doing too much vibrato that can give a sign that you are hiding some defects. But anyway, okay, it could be just also a style of playing, you know, you can go more the romantic way. I prefer, you know, to keep it cool, you know. In general, like long notes, like for instance at the beginning, I like to start senza vibrato, then open up bit by bit, you know, like a flower opening up. So like this. Uh. Instead of going straight through, you know. Because then it sounds normal. I think that would be nice, you know, it could create a very nice beginning and... Because this is what you want. Think about it, play around with it. Same over here. Um, so don't go immediately, don't, don't spoil the whole surprise to the public immediately. Create, so start sense of vibrato. So you see, that's nice and it, it seems that it's stretching and I, I like this thing of stretching. It's just a matter of taste, you know. You might not like it, but I like it and many others will like it as well. Maybe that's a thing that you can think about. So conclusion, vibrato, free choice, you know, me, I would go more, you know, to the old style. So less vibrato, more right hand, you know, and uh, if you want to use a vibrato, just use it for that extra, but not in accession. Okay, so with all these things that I'm mentioning you, of course, it will not resolve immediately your problem, but that's, you know, food for the thoughts. So you can experiment play with it, you know, but the most important is keep calm, psychologically keep calm, you know, don't fall into this trap when the piano plays, you know, the last measure, and you're like hysterical. No, keep calm, enjoy it. This is, you know, you're singing, it's your moment. You know, it's D major, it's sweet, or you can see it more like a victory. Anyway, you're mature, you're not just a student, you're an artist here. So take along the public, you know, don't play only for yourself. Of course, you have to play for yourself because you are your first listener, but take the public with you. Tell them a story, you know, tell them what you need to tell. Of course, with respecting some rules in, yeah, in the classical music. Okay, last part that I wanted to talk about is this one here. <laughs> So 
So this is another passage you know that people screw up and or they just get nervous and because of being nervous they screw up. I also screwed up many times, maybe like 10 times in total. But anyway, um, again, remember the woodwit thing I was saying, hoboe, oh boy. Anyway, you know the instrument, right? So you need, it goes like the wind. So you have to, you know, go from here and you come to that C sharp, you know, to show this septim, that seventh, you know. And wait a little bit on that um, C sharp. Why not? Don't go straight into tempo. I don't like this. Huh? And take it easy now with the shift. Many people have the tendency, you know, to shift through the string. So like this. No, don't do like this. Better shift like this. So with the first finger, go until the D. And besides, in your favor, it's gonna be this because when you fade out, uh, on the moment you fade out, you can do the shift. Uh, because here again, we come to this angelic voice. Eh? And then, okay, the rest, it's um, peanuts. But that would be interesting to know. Okay, then we have this one. Eh? So we are going now into the E major chord. But before that, we have this tricky thing, so that 10th, you know, from D to F sharp. There is a way uh, for this. You don't need to sustain the whole double stop. Eh? Because, okay, you're there. How are you gonna jump from this position to the other position? So what I do is like this. I play the double stop. Eh? And I only play the last note, only D. Yeah, so one more time. Eh? And meantime, I'm holding the, I'm playing the D, my third finger is getting ready, you know, to puff, hit the F sharp. So one more time. And you can't miss it. Of course, it's always possible to miss it. This needs to be trained, but think about it. Why not? Okay, this is uh, supposed not to be a problem. So anyways, that's it that I wanted to talk for today. I didn't, I don't want to create, you know, a huge thing because Haydn Concerto is such a topic, you know, that you can go for hours, hours, hours and hours and hours. I just wanted to, you know, to point out, you know, this beginning, you know, so you can really nail it. But for me, the most important is that you think per measure and not per beat exactly, because if you make it per beat, it's gonna be heavy and it's gonna hold your back. You know, and then it's not going to, you're not going to create these musical lines and, you know, it's not going to flow and you're just going to lose it. And then, okay, once the beginning, it's not in the right, you know, moment, then the rest of the concerto, it's going to be all like uh, dragging down. Anyways, I hope that you found these uh, tips and uh, information useful. Of course, in the near future, I will create more uh, things like these, you know, maybe I'll talk a little bit about Vorja Concerto or Sensans Concerto, maybe a couple of sonatas, Bach cello suites. So please let me know in the comment section what would you like uh, that I talk about. With this, I want to thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye bye.